Hi, Chris Murray here. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the new viewport label settings that have appeared in 3ds Max 2017. Previously in 2016 and before, there were only three viewport labels and now there are four. There's some subtle differences between these two and a couple of new features, so let's go ahead and take a quick look. The first menu pretty much remains the same. This is called the general menu and this is where you can restore your viewports, disable them, show the grids, uh, access 2D pan and zoom mode, that sort of thing. The second viewport label is the point of view menu, and this is where you choose what or how you're going to be looking at the assets that are in your viewports, you know, camera views, perspective views, top, bottom, front, etc., things like that. This is also where you access your extended viewports, uh, you can actually place other things within the viewports like track views and scene explorers. You can convert a viewport to active shade rendering, real-time rendering, or GPU-based rendering if you're using iRay or uh, V-Ray or Metray or something like that. Um, and you can also add other things within the viewports, and these can be saved with your viewport layout commands, um, mo you know, like motion mixers or various explorers like the Crease or Material Explorer and the new Boolean Explorer, so things like that. Where it's really different is this: these two uh, viewport labels here. One is called quality and one is called shading. And what it's done is it's taken the shading menu and divided it into two different types of commands. The first viewport label is really about viewport quality, what it is that we're seeing. You'll notice that the term realistic mode is gone and been replaced with high quality. Uh, you have standard viewport um, shading you have performance viewport shading. Um, it'll automatically change the viewport shading to DirectX mode um, for uh, game developers who want to work in that or any type of you know real-time environment can be used with that. Um, so the other thing that's really kind of interesting here, and this is new within 2017, is under materials, we now have a couple of overrides. So for example, um, if I want to check out all of the UVs within the scene, I can actually do a uh, override with the UV checker and it automatically applies a UV texture checker texture to every object in the scene so that you can just check and see how your UVs are going to be uh, how your UVs appear on all of the different objects in the scene the next viewport label is really uh, you know about how the viewport is displaying or the features that are being displayed within the viewport so if the first one's about quality these ones are kind of about specific. So, for example, um, your viewport styles, your things like that. So, you know, if you're viewing in facets, uh, it really separates um, the viewport features from the viewport quality. So, for example, if I want to do standard facets, I can separate those two. Or if I want to have high quality but still be in faceted mode, I can have that. So it, it's nice in that it separates it that way. There's a new viewport style here called flat color, which um, is interesting. And you'll notice that as the lighting settles in here, I'm still able to get that good for reading silhouettes or basically just you know basic room shading, see how your geometry is uh, going to play. The other thing that's really interesting here, and you can access uh, this in either one of the drop-down menus is this new per view presets, or in this case, per view preference. So for example, if I wanna go to per view presets, it brings up a viewport setting and preferences, and e this is the tab that you see in the high quality viewport label, and this is the tab that you see in the preferences label. So what this gives you the ability to do is set up how your viewports are uh, rendered in terms of quality. You know, you can set up your ambient occlusion settings, your material settings if you're doing an override and things like that. And then you can also set up, um, you know, the basically the view preferences, edges, uh, rendering styles, things like that. And then you can apply them to all the views or it would just basically be the user-defined preference. So as you change viewports, all of these settings, whatever you have here, would then be set up for those viewports, you know, however, whenever you want to invoke them. So again, nice little additions to the viewport labels here and the viewport controls, just giving us more uh, control over how we're experiencing whatever it is that we're creating in 3ds Max. We'll